Hello everyone, I hope you all are fine and you all are healthy and eager to learn something new. Today we are going to discuss about action research. But before moving with the explanation, I would like to present one question that I found in UGC NET JRF June 2024 question paper. The question is, as you can see, mark the correct sequence of steps in action research. We are having these four options, A action, B reflection, C plan and D observation. We have to arrange them in a correct sequence according to the steps of action research. I am not going to answer this particular question, but after the completion of this particular video, you will be able to answer this particular question by own. Not only this question, you will be able to answer all those questions that you will find in different or in various entrance examinations that will be based on action research. So let's move. Here you can see action research is a participatory and cyclical method. So if you want to understand what action research is, we have to understand what it mean by participatory method and what it mean by cyclical method. I will explain them, but here you can see action research is a participatory and cyclical method of research that aimed at solving problems or improving practices through systematic inquiry and reflection. So action research is a very unique kind of technique that we are having that we are using for specific purposes. But if we want to understand what is action research mean, we have to understand what is participatory method and what is cyclical method. So when we are using this term, participatory method. This simply means people who are experiencing the problem, people who are experiencing the problem or who are working in that particular area that can participate in that particular research. For example, we can take one example so that will be easy to understand. If the research is about improving teaching method, then in those particular situations, the teacher themselves would be the part of a research team. That's why we call them participatory style. So those individuals who are facing the problem right now or those individuals who are working in that particular area, they will be the part of a research team. That's why we can say that is participatory method. And second, you can see cyclical. Cyclical simply means action research follow the repetitive cycle. That's why we are using this particular term, na, cyclical. So cyclical means just imagine this is just like a loop, right? So you plan first, you plan what to do, you take action, you observe what happened and then you reflect on it. And after reflecting, right, you plan again and using what you learned from the previous cycle and this cycle goes on till solution. What I mean to say, cyclical simply means there will be process in a loop. So you plan what to do, you take action, you observe what happened and you reflect on it. And if problem is there, if problem isn't solved, right? We have to solve the problem, but problem is still exist. In those particular situation, we again make the plan, right? Again, we will take action. Again, we observe what happened and again, we reflect on it. And if problem will solve, then we will move ahead. But if problem exists, if we are not able to solve that particular problem, right, in this particular cycle, then again, we will begin from the beginning. Again, we will make plan. Again, we will take action. Again, we will observe what happened and then we reflect on it. So this will be a cycle. So whenever we are using action research, we are performing action in a cycle. The process will be in cycle till we are solving the problem, right? Hope you are understanding what I mean to say. So here you can see now we have to understand what is the stages of action research. Whenever we are going to conduct action research, what will be the stages? So there are so many stages that we have to understand one by one. So stages of action research, stages of research. Like number one, in the beginning, there will be identification of the problem. Identification of the problem. Identification of problem or problems. So there will be identification of the problem. So in the beginning, 
Firstly, we need to clearly define what problem we want to solve. For example, a teacher might notice that a student are not very engaged in the class, right? So they are taking the class, but students are not much engaged. So this is the problem that teacher identifying. So we can say this is identification of the problem. Now teacher having a problem. Now they will try to solve that particular problem. How to solve those. So all those process will be further. But right now they identify what is the problem. Then second will be planning. Second will be planning. Now they will make plan, right? So planning simply means we are coming up with a plan to address that particular problem. This could involve trying out new teaching methods. Suppose that teacher identified na, at, at identi identification of problem stage, they identified that a student is not engaging themselves in the classroom. So they will make a plan or maybe chances are there that they could improve trying a new teaching method. They will use new teaching method like using more group activity or they encourage a student engagement by doing or by performing so many activity in the classroom. That is the planning. So teacher now having the plan that, okay, this is the problem, right? T students are not much engaged in the uh, classroom activity. So I will use this teaching method. This is my plan. And through this teaching method, I will try to increase their particip participation and we will increase their engagement. So this is the second. Then third, if we are having plan, then there are time to perform them. So we can say that is action. So after planning, right, you know, individual put their plan into action. So teacher would start using those new teaching method in their classroom. So basically at the planning level, they decided which kind of teaching method they will use. Now at action level, they will start implementing them in the classroom. So that will be action. Now at the fourth level, suppose that we performed action, then there will be observation. Then there will be observation. So observation simply mentioning while new method are being used, when teacher using that particular method, they collect data to see how things are going. This might include observing the class, taking notes, right, or asking students for feedback. So at the observation level, at action level, they implemented that particular teaching technique. Now at observation level, they are collecting data. They are collecting data by observing the classroom, what a students doing, what kind of activity they are performing. Then they are observing while a students taking notes, or maybe they are observing, right, their engagement by collecting feedback. And when observation will be completed, then there will be a reflection then there will be reflection. <coughs> then there will be reflection. Reflexing simply means after collecting the data, the teacher trying to understand what is working and what is not based on previous processes, based on data that they have collected, right? So teacher would reflect on, right, that a student are more engaged, engaged, and if they are not, why not? So you know, at reflection stage, they are using the data, right? At, at observation stage, they will collect the data. At reflection stage, they will, right, use that particular data to understand is my student is more engaged in this particular class or not? If they are, why? And if not, then why not, right? So this kind of understanding, right, will be reflection. So, you know, the fifth stage will be reflection. Then after reflection, suppose that they identified, yes, my students is more engaged in the class just because of my teaching method. Now they are identifying, no, childs or students are not much engaged just because of ABC region. So they will identify if child is more engaged, why? And if child is not engaged, then why? Right? And if suppose that child is not much engaged, then there will be replanning. Then there will be replanning. <coughs> then there will be replanning. So based on what you learned, that means what teacher learned, they adjust their plan and start the cycle again. That means if on the reflection stage, they identified that no child or students are not much engaged, right? So we have to 
and you ha we have to use another technique. So for that particular region, they have to begin the cycle. They have to begin, right, you know, from a step one. Maybe they are going to identify a new problem. Okay, this is also the problem. That's why students are not much engaged. Then they will make another plan. They will develop another teaching method. They will use another teaching style. Then there will be action. Then there will be observation. Then reflection. Then again, replanning. If problem is not solved, then there will be replanning. Right? So based on what teacher learned, right, they adjust their plan and start the cycle again. If group activity increase engagement and, and, and if, if right, they are identifying that there are increase in the engagement of few students, right? But there are so many students who are still not engaged in those particular condition. Maybe the teacher will decide that we will increase more in interacting or more interactive games in the next cycle, right? So basically what we are discussing here at the replanning, if teacher identified at reflection stage that, okay, my student is not much engaged or they identified that yes, few students showing engagement in the class, their engagement went up. Right? But there are maximum number of students who are still not engaged in this particular classroom. That means they will replan the whole structure. So maybe they will identify a new kind of problem. Maybe they will develop a new plan or maybe they will develop new teaching strategy. Maybe they will use new te you know, uh, teaching tools. Then they will take action accordingly. Then there will be observation and then there will be reflection at the reflection stage. Maybe they will think that, yes, now all the students are engaged. So I achieved what I want to achieve. But if still they are thinking, no, many individual students are there in this classroom who are not much engaged in those situations. Again, there will be a replanning. So this cycle will continue, right? This will begin, right? You know, like how this will work, right? There will be one, two, Three, four, five, six, and this one. Like this kind of cycle will continue till solution. Right? So this is the thing. Now, next what I mean to mention here, why we use action research? What is the reason behind using action research? There are so many techniques. Na? So what is the specific reason behind using action research? So I would like to mention three specific points. Why use action research? Why use action research? Why use action research? If this particular kind of question, right, coming into right our consciousness, so I would like to mention three specific points. Number one, this is the first reason behind using action research. Solve real problems. They solve real problems. That simply means it directly addresses issues that people face in their work or daily life or those individual will be the part of research team who are facing that particular problem so we are solving real problems through action research and second is involves you know uh, uh, practitioners or involve those kind of individual right who are facing that particular problem so we can say we involve practitioners Right. And third characteristics I would like to mention that is flexibility and ongoing flexibility and ongoing. This simply means you can keep improving your approach based on what you learned each time you go through the cycle. That means we are identifying the problem, then we are making the prep you know, planning, then we are moving ahead. Each time we are learning something new. And if we are not achieving the solution, we are not getting solution, then we are using those particular learning in next cycle. 
again right when we are completing those cycle either problem will be solved and if we are not achieving the goal we will use learning of this current cycle in the next cycle so here you can see these are the main reason behind using we are using action research first solve the real problems second we involve practitioner we involve those individual who are facing that particular problem or who are practicing those particular things and that is flexible and ongoing right so these are the thing now i am going back right now i am going back and just try to answer this particular question now i am very hopeful that you will be able to answer them now we have to arrange them in a sequence mark the correct sequence of a step in action research a action b reflection c planning and d observation now we all are aware that okay in given options first of all there will be planning from the given options right after the planning there will be action after the action there will be observation and after the observation there will be reflection so what will be the right answer c a d b c a d b so this one fourth c a d b will be the right answer i am very hopeful that if you will find any question related to action research in upcoming entrances you will be able to handle them very effectively so hopefully in this short video you learn something new and if you are having any doubt do not hesitate to mention them in chat box that's all for today see you in next video bye take care